with us, everyone. I am joined today by Trey Anthony. You may know her from The Kink in Your Hair, of course, that amazing play that we all grew to know and love. And also, she is the first Black Canadian woman to ever create and produce a primetime series for major Canadian television. We all followed along when the kink made it to, to TV. She's since written for the Oprah Winfrey chat network, for Lionsgate, comedy TV, and now she's written her own book, A Black Girl in Love with Herself. Yes, Trey, welcome. Show us the book, show us the book coming up. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I love it. How are you? How are you, girl? I'm doing really well. Thank you. Really nice to see you. It's been a minute. Where in the world are you? I'm actually in Tampa. <laughs> Tampa. I get around. I get around. Yeah. I'm actually in Tampa sure right do. now. I oh don't know how long that will last, but here I am. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Is that like COVID central now? Isn't like Florida? It like is. It sure is. But the good thing is I really don't go anywhere. I stay in my home. <laughs> right. And then when I do go out, it's usually just like a really sacred part of the beach where nobody is. And I dip in, dip out and come home. Yeah. So that's kind of about how it goes. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> so I read the book in one night. <sighs> People have been saying that. Yes. One night because I couldn't put it down because mm. it was revealing so much of myself mm. that I had shied away from revealing to myself if you know what I mean yeah oh definitely and, oh, I cried and laughed and laughed and cried <laughs> because <laughs> there and I what really stood out for me was the part when you talked about breaking down yeah. and not wanting to see a therapist and thinking that everything that you're that is happening is normal yes but yes. really it's not normal at all could you talk about this like indestructible black woman strong black woman thing that we all are doing and continuing to do yeah 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 we, we, we do it all the time I saw a meme once and and I hope I'm quoting it right mm -hmm. it says a lot of times Black women think we are failing, but what we're actually doing is surviving trauma at all times. <laughs> and we just don't recognize that this is actual trauma, but we see it as, oh, we are failing and we cannot fail. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely was where that book, Black Girl in Love with Herself was rooted for me was to say, when I thought I was failing, this was actual trauma I was going through. Now, speaking of trauma, your book starts off yeah. <laughs> with the, the traumatic end of your relationship. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, you know, you're a public person and you uh -huh. lived, you still, you still live your life out loud. And we love that about you. Thank so you. many of us who followed you on Facebook mm -hmm. were following along with your relationship because they were amazing daily posts that were giving us giving us all FOMO, right? Like yes. it's an incredible relationship, which let's honor was, was good for, you know, for what it was in the time. Oh, definitely, but definitely. Can you, can you talk a little bit about what happened? Because we noticed your followers noticed that it kind of coincided with the arrival of a new person in your life, your, your yes. little baby. Yes. What happened? And what have you? Everybody done? wants. To, I want to know too. I want to know too. I specifically <laughs> want to know what have you learned about living your life in public? Because even though all uh, of us are public people, a lot of us are living our lives publicly on social media. Yeah, I think if there's anything that I have learned, I'm going to take a page out of Beyonce and Jay Z's world, right? <laughs> like uh, the next time around when I do this, right? I'm definitely going to keep certain things sacred. Like you'll know when I, I'm starting something or I'm in something really serious with someone, definitely I will do a little post. I'll do one <laughs> little post. Okay. And I'll be like, your girl's back. <laughs> He's in love. But that's it. <laughs> you ain't gonna see nothing more, nothing, right? right. And you may see me go down the aisle. I'll take a little video. Yes. Right? But that's about it. I, I'm not doing this shit again. No, yeah. no, 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 yeah. no. no. No, because it really um, was a humbling and really humiliating experience for me. And I'm not going to 
um, try and sugarcoat it in any kind of way. It was such a fall from grace, but that fall made me able to really write the truth in this book of what it's like when your whole life blows up in your face and you don't see it coming, when you think that you're on the same page with somebody, and when you just really ignore just your intuition and your guts because you so want to believe in someone and believe in love, and especially for someone who wasn't lucky in love to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. And who had that dream of, I wanted a good love. And I wanted a healthy love. And because of that, I think as so many women do that we sacrifice ourselves mm -hmm. in order to be in something that may not be the best choice for us. Now, when we look back, right? And you see how much of yourself you gave up in order to make something look perfect, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, it really was an eye-opening experience for me. And it was something that walked me to my core. It's been nearly two years and I will still say to people, mm -hmm. I am still recovering from that blow. I'm still recovering. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm 90% mm -hmm. to the tray, but I'm still not that tray. And I don't wanna be that old tray either. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I'm really diligently moving through and working through is my own self-care, my own self-preservation, my own self-identity, and just finding out who I am when you, I choose to love me first and put myself first. Were you scared to be a single mom? Oh, girl, <laughs> girl, listen, right? I think you know this, right? Mm -hmm. I, my mom had me at 17, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm the oldest of three children. My mom was a single mom. My grandmother had six children. She was a single mom. And if there's anything in my life that I declared loudly was that I didn't want to be a solo parent. Mm -hmm. And the irony of it all in this was I waited because my partner at that time wasn't wait and ready. Mm -hmm. And so because I didn't want to be a solo mom, I was like, okay, I'm going to wait. I'm going to give you time. I'm going to give you time. And now the irony is I'm now a solo parent doing it by myself as an older parent mm -hmm. as well. So that's a whole different ball game, right? Because yeah. this kid just has me running. Right? With him, right? And I'm like, I'm too old for this, right? Very much. So. I have friends yeah. who are seeing their kids off to grade nine and 10. And I'm picking <laughs> my kid up at the daycare, right? So I, you know that this is a, a different time for me oh, to yeah. be a parent. <laughs> oh, yes. Let's talk about the book and getting it made, the yeah. journey of getting it made, because you have so much cachet, you have accomplished so much. People might think, well, it was probably, you know, a, a cakewalk for her to get this book done. What was it actually like? Girl, listen, I sent it off to an agent and I was like, this is the book I want to do. And she shopped it around for a couple of months. I'm going to give her credit for that. She shopped it around for a couple of months. And then she was just like, nobody wants this book. Nobody going to buy this book. Nobody, <laughs> right? Nobody wants it, Trey. Give up, right? That was the last email I got from her before I fired her when she was like, how, how many times can I tell you that nobody wants it, <laughs> right? She goes, you need to learn the, the word no. And that's what I was like, you're no longer my Rude. Peace, <laughs> So yeah, so that, that's a true story. I, I, I don't have to lie about that, a true story. And that's when I decided that I was gonna shop it myself. Mm -hmm. And I shop, I went to Hay House because I was such a huge fan of Hay House. And I've read every single book on the Hay House, um, you know, the mm -hmm. whole agenda thing. Mm -hmm. yes. And so I decided to do it there. And then when I sent it to Hay House, it was so funny because I decided, you know, that I was gonna send in my own book proposal and put it my way. And, and not go with an agent. And when I said to the, the editor, um, the acquisition editor wrote me back, she was so lovely. And she said, it's quite evident that you have never written a book proposal before. <laughs> she goes, but I love your tenacity, but the format is all wrong. <laughs> like it's totally wrong, right? And so she said, oh but God. there's something there. Like, I feel there's something there. And she said, I'm going to send you a couple of book proposals like so you template. can take a look at the format and the sample right. and then come back to me. Right. And I took about three months and I followed and I, I, I did some research and I went on YouTube and I read some books on how to put a proposal together and I copied her samples. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got it in. 
And that's when, and it wasn't a, a yes right away. It took a good sure. six months, again, waiting and waiting before I got the yes for the book. But we do not learn the word no around here. We do not learn the word no. Okay. I don't know the word no. I don't know the Please. word no. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not right now, but not no. So <laughs> then that led last year, I believe, to a brand new position for you at Bell Media as a development producer. How's that going? What have you been doing at Bell Media? It's been amazing. It's been such a different experience. Me, um, so as all of you guys know, I've always kind of done my own stuff, right? Self-employed businesswoman. So the lovely part about media, which I love the most, <laughs> is just seeing that money in my bank account every Friday. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, I'm with you. But on a serious note, um, it's been really great to see that Bell is really walking the talk of trying to get more diverse voices in there, more diverse programming. They've been really open to my suggestions around trying to get people of color in, you know, shadowing new shows that we're developing. So we're able to, because it, like everything, as you know, Camille, you've been in the industry for mm -hmm. so many years, right? Like you're a veteran, you know this. Mm -hmm. It's about relationships, yeah. right? People hire who they know. And so if you don't know the people and they don't know you, you're not going to get it. Mm -hmm. So for me, I've been really instrumental and really active and, and just really clear that I want to get people in the door, people who people may have not heard about, but who have been doing their, their thing for years and years out there. And people are like, you know, and the mainstream, quote, quote, mainstream haven't heard of them. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, that has been a really big thing of meeting with creators of color. You yeah. know, I've been very vocal that I want to produce um, shows by people of color. And that is really at the top of my list. And I haven't been shy about that. And Bell there, been very anyone, supportive. That. Anyone you're excited about, super excited about that, that you there's, can um, There's a few. Um, okay. you, you know, I can't talk I know. I can't until everything is signed. All I'm right. But there's definitely a few few things coming out that I'm very, very excited about, not only about the creation, the creative process, but also around the host, the casting that I think is going to be really phenomenal. And I think it's going to put um, Canada on a whole different map of how we go and do things. Yeah. Yes. All right. Are you thinking yeah. about your next step about the future or are you trying to stay in the moment? What's up? Oh, girl, I, I think I'm always guilty of that, of going, you know, thinking of the future for me I really want to do because I felt really robbed during the pandemic of mm. not doing an in-person book tour so next year I have planned like a full city book tour you know in Canada across the U.S. because I was so surprised I kept saying to my publisher well my market's in Canada my market's in Canada and then they called me um, about a month ago and they said I know you keep saying your market's in Canada but your book is selling way more better in the US. Like women are buying the book from Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble told us that like, they come and they buy like three or four copies, oh, right? They, they all just buy all one. their girlfriends. And they give it to all their girlfriends, right? And you know, Canadians, we're a bit more conservative. So we'll buy the one and maybe then send it to our friend and say, listen, yeah, that, um, 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 that's what I and drop it off <laughs> and drop it off to your friend in Scarborough, right? When you're in Rexdale, you, you know, I know how we do it. I know how we do it. But I'm that girl too, right? <laughs> But Americans will actually <laughs> okay, but give it back when you're done, okay? Yeah, <laughs> but Americans will actually buy for their brethren. <laughs> that's where we're at. That's where we're at. But I still Amazing. Love people. Amazing. Well, Trey Anthony is coming to a city near you soon. Keep it locked. Trey, thank you so much for being with us, sis. Much love. Oh, you. thank you so much for having me. And guys, go out and buy the book. Anyway, buy the damn book. Buy the damn book. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>